mai i runga, tu te tawa mai i raro, tu te tawa mai i roto, tu te tawa mai i wako. Kia tau te tau te tau te mōrua ki te katoa, o mōrua hui e tai ki e. Thank you. Firstly, uh, just to advise that we are, of course, being recorded and live streamed for this meeting. And for the benefit of our uh, guests that we have us today, just some housekeeping notes. In the unlikely event of an emergency, a siren and bells will sound continuously, so please leave the venue by the nearest exit, which is just over here to our left, and assemble on the grass area in front of the floral clock. If the emergency is an earthquake, do not attempt to leave the building until the shaking has stopped. Drop, cover and hold. And the uh, toilet facilities are out in the main foyer. Welcome everybody to our hearings for the Revenue and Financing Policy Review. And uh, first of all, I will just call for apologies. We do have an apology for Councillor Wright. Um, she's just going to be a little bit late. Can I have a mover and a seconder please? Thank you, Councillor Tuppany and Councillor Bogue. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. Carried. Do we have any conflicts of interest? Through you, Madam Chair, I just want to confirm I'm a property owner of a negatively affected property um, with a significant um, likely rates increase. I just want to check through you that this is not a conflict of interest for this hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't believe you have a conflict here, Councillor Simpson. Your, the impact is no greater in significance on you than that on the wider community, so you are fine to participate. Uh, we have no public forum and there's no announcements by myself. Do we have any announcements for management? No. Excellent. So we uh, will get straight into hearing our submissions and just uh, for the information of our submitters that are here today, you have been allocated five minutes to present and a bell will ring at the end of this five minutes and then there's five minutes allocated for questions. Uh, I'm, I'm relatively lenient if you're going over five minutes so we won't just cut you off instantly, so that's fine. And uh, we will invite you to come up when it's your allotted time to the front here and get the ball rolling. So um, I would like to call on our first submitter, uh, Greg Macklow. Welcome, Greg. And just so you know, all the councillors do have your written submission uh, on hand and will, of course, have already read that as well. So um, we look forward to hearing what you would like to highlight out of your submission. Very good. Thank you. Well, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, Mia Wise, councillors. Um, I'm Greg Macklow and I'm a resident in East Hills. Uh, thank you all for your time um, and the opportunity to address you here today. Um, I've previously submitted um, a written um, submission, as mentioned, but I won't bore you with all the uh, figures from that. Uh, choosing today to um, focus on the principles and fairness uh, that should underpin any taxation system, such as our current land-based um, value system, and particularly the differential categories within it. I'd like to address some of the key points that I hope will influence your deliberations uh, and proposed rates changes to the rural areas. Uh, my wife and I support the concept of paying our fair share for community facilities and feel at present we currently do this, paying well in excess of the average rate um, for Napier properties. Given in 2017, Napier were proud to be uh, New Zealand's lowest rated area uh, with Hastings in second. It is concerning to see how this current proposal will affect those in the Napier rural areas and lead to massive disadvantages for Napier residents compared to our neighbours just across Hill Road. Hastings currently operates 11 differentials in Napier 6. The Napier system is at present somewhat more streamlined and there appears little justification in altering a differential system which seems at present based on fairness 
by recognising that rural properties in the main receive lower services, have a greater distance to travel to amenities and higher initial infrastructure around septic, power and water supplies, etc. Esk Hills encompasses 53 properties at the top of Hill Road between Bayview and the Esk Valley. It is not within the city boundaries and is in fact a 20 minute drive or 15 kilometres away from the Napier CBD. We are part owners of 70 hectares along with other residents of the estate. Our property and the neighbours sit within the 70 hectares. This is the same area that the council are currently seeking to bring into the significant natural area scheme for the Napier city. The area is planted in native bush and grass and some of it is grazed by livestock. We are a rural property in a rural area. The proposed redefining of rural to any area of five hectares or more, mainly for agricultural use, is flawed and unfair in its approach. Irrespective of the use of the land, its proximity to council amenities and availability of services should be the primary criteria when it comes to establishing rating differentials. Fairness would further indicate that the principle of access to and frequency of use of communal council services and amenities should influence the level of a differential rating as it appears to do at present and historically. Our family cannot walk to or easily bike to any of the council amenities, unlike those in the city. When we purchased, we were moving from a rural lifestyle block on Tukitook Road and intended to live rurally again. In 2011, we looked at the rating costs on the land and accepted by way of an implied contract that we would pay a rural differential rate as there were no services to the site supplied by the Napier District Council save an access rate, that rate being the current 63.47%. That was viewed by us as recognising the additional infrastructure costs uh, we would incur for water, sewage, stormwater and maintenance of the area and lower access to council amenities and services. We had to pay all our upfront costs for services in our rural area, amounting to tens of thousands of dollars. So hence our opposition to rezoning Esk Hills area from other rural 63.47% to residential other 100%. We object to the proposed changes away from other rural zone. As I've previously stated, we are located rurally and nothing has changed substantially for the past 20 years since the last review. We have no water service from Napier, no sewerage, no street lighting, no footpaths, no road marking, no mail delivery, no couriers, no fibre intet no council stormwater, and we have minimal roadside maintenance. Some additional factors when considering our contribution to the local area are that all 53 properties pay $840 annually to the upkeep of the estate, which includes the roadside maintenance and the stormwater for the estate. Esk Hills is not like any of the other city suburbs. It is therefore not equitable to charge us at the same level of rates. Regarding increasing rural rates by 22% when rural based properties such as ours use no more council facilities than previous in the last review in 2001, we would be far better off under the current proposals to be administered by the Hastings District Council given their rating differential for properties just the other side of Hill Road and East Gridge. A similar area and similar valued properties under the current proposal to alter those our rates would be triple that of those properties. So I reiterate that that is a rating differential rate triple that of our neighbours just across the road. Such an ongoing rating difference may prove significant to buyers who are looking to purchase in the area, thus reducing the attractiveness and values of properties based on Napier's uh, area. And another principle of fairness should be that Hawke's Bay residents living in the same locality should pay a similar amount as in effect most people frequent and use the facilities across both cities and the surrounding rural areas. For properties like ours in the rural area, I recommend that a rating differential of 66% to recognise this. A small increase and a clear rounded number of two thirds of the full differential. This proposal as it stands is unfair and unwarranted as the original thinking around the current difference and rating amounts would have been to take into account who should pay for services received and the fact that those who choose to live rurally do not receive the same level as those who live in town or enjoy the same proximity to amenities. 
we've already paid to put our services in place and why are we expected to pay for things we either do not receive or at best use on a reduced basis. We sincerely trust that you take this submission seriously and stick with a differential system that is not significantly different to the one which exists at present. Thank you once again for your time and the opportunity to present. Thank you very much, Greg. I will just open up to councillors for any questions that you may have. Councillor Price. Can I just clarify, there's 53 properties on that area, is there, of the 70 hectares? Yes. So what's it, so are they all different sizes? Are they an average size of...? No, they differ in size. Um, the bulk of the land is owned in communal interest. OK, thank you. OK, if there's no further questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. I was wondering if we could make the people in the audience um, aware that there are copies of the agenda with the um, staff recommendations available mm -hmm. so that they could help themselves and see what it is we've come up with. Yep. So they are just available over. Yeah. Okay. And I would now invite Craig Waterhouse up to present, please. Welcome, Craig. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? The last I'm probably building on what this uh, Mr. Macklow has just said. Um, rurally, we think we've been uh, unfairly treated. Um, that's me. So we've got no uh, street lights, no footpaths, no community park that we can drift down to. Uh, I suppose we can get on our push bikes which is not so bad. Um, and I want to partly challenge even the methodology you're using to uh, charge us uh, uh, significantly more rates now. Um, as you can see, 20% of your uh, rates is, uh, is driven by general, which is uh, uh, the cost of Adele and her team and uh, a few other people uh, running the rest of things but 25% of that is stormwater, waste, and drinking water, which uh, we in our rural area get none of. Um, it seems a for, far more fairer representation in a fully uh, absorption cost system that you'd allocate that 20% across other costs, and uh, water would suddenly become 31%, um, and we wouldn't end up paying so much rates as it is. Um, we pay a disproportionate amount of rates now. Uh, and uh, when you look at overheads and other things, you actually challenge why are we paying so much rates? Uh, significantly more than if we're in the city. Now, I've got a property at 25 Morris Spence Avenue. Four people live there. I've got a property at 375 Brookfields Road, and four people live there. And there's a direct rates comparison now I also pay $700 towards uh, um, a uh, flood protection drainage scheme to the regional council. So my those four people pay in excess of over 100% more than the four people in Morris Spence Avenue. Although they're my children, they don't pay hardly anything, <laughs> um, which is a separate issue. Um, at the moment, I currently pay 71% more excluding the three waters. And you're going to increase it, according to my calculation, to 125% more. And I've got no idea why. Four people live at the same properties, four people share in the services, and you're going to increase the share by 125%. So my question is why? That's it. Thank you, Craig. And I don't recall uh, actually if I saw you at any of the public meetings that we held last no, um, year. I either missed them or was away. You 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 had them in a particular gap. Yes, um, oh, you may have been away. So I wasn't able to attend any of them. Okay, because uh, we did explain uh, at those public meetings the the rationale for actually the proposed changes that yep. we have made in terms of um, the general rate covering those sort of um, general community assets which 
every resident in Napier has access to, such as our libraries, cemeteries, parks. Oh, rate increase and, I don't have an issue with. So, um, you could put it up by more, I'd be OK. <laughs> I'll tell you when, when you get it. <laughs> List those properties again. <laughs> I've got a couple in Hastings as well. <laughs> uh, I will now open up for any questions from the councillors. Deputy Mayor Brosnan. Hi, Craig. Thank you for your submission. I, I think um, one of the things I'm interested to hear from submitters is around the, um, that idea of proximity to accessibility. So because you live further away, is your um, household's access to the services similar? And so I'd just be interested in your, um, I suppose, anecdotal, or depending where you, where you well, I'll live. Give, I'll give you a good example. So uh, the Morris Spence... Uh, property is probably 50 metres from the park. Um, my One of my Hastings properties is in Northwood and they are about 100 metres from a quite a, quite a tidy park and one's in Anson Street, which is probably 50 metres from a reasonable sized park or if you turn around, they're quite close to Fantasyland as well. We've got no such access. Does that really matter? Um, we have to drive to those places. We're at an age where we don't use them anyway. So yeah. So th things like uh, public toilets, if you were in town, um, access to the library, uh, the cemetery, those sorts of places. Do you feel I you feel, have... I feel we should be paying for that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. There's no further questions. Thank you very Thanks. much, Craig, for coming to present to us today. Uh, next, I would invite Christina Clough. 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 Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Christina. Thank you. Right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I think we've had uh, a lot of facts and figures from the two previous submitters, and I won't repeat any of those. I do, however, concur with their <clears throat> reasoning that um, the facilities that the community share in general have access to and can enjoy or need. I have no argument with the portion of rates that we all share for that. Um, but what I do want to point out is that I, I live in the Loop, number 20, the Loop, just at Riverbend Road. I'm sure you, most of you would know where it is. And compared to people who live in town, we have a lot of extra costs. And I would divide those costs, as I did in my, sub, my written submission, up into two parts. The first one is that when we built our house nearly 20 years ago, it started, I think, 18 years ago, um, we had considerable extra costs compared to building a house in town. We had to install an approved biologically uh, bacterial processing uh, effluent plant. Um, we had to build or have a raised grey water soak hill for the grey water from that, including the plumbing for it and, and all the, the um, stuff that that entailed, which was considerably more than we had expected. Um, we had to put in water tanks or have a bore or share the cost of a bore from neighbours. We chose to have two 25,000 litre water tanks. We have to have water filters, of course, because the water comes off the roof. Um, so our extra costs at the time were in the region of $23,000, $25,000 compared to a build of a house in town. That was 18 years ago. I am prepared to bet that it would be double now because those sort of prices have gone up astronomically. And on top of that, we have the other portion of our increased costs, which is what it costs us ongoingly to maintain those structures that are additional to what people in town have. 
So twice a year we have to have the sewage treatment plant serviced by an accredited uh, professional who knows how to do that. We have to use electric power to run our water pump from the water tanks, the water pump to the grey water soakage hill, and the air filter in that enables the bacteria in the sewage treatment plant to work. We also have to replace filters at least every year. That's both physical filters and UV filters. So we have probably about $1,000 worth of extra cost a year compared to people in town. Now, we are only two people in our household. So a family of four or five would probably have doubled those maintenance costs because of the extra use of everything running that much more. Also, we have those occasional but inevitable costs of replacing things that need replacing. We, um, we have to look at things like replacing the, um, the um, pump that runs and circulates stuff from one section of the big underground sewage mm -hmm. treatment plant to the next chamber to the next chamber before it becomes grey water. Now that goes independently of whether there is any use of water or sewage from the house 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. It constantly uses power. That's mm -hmm. the way they're built. We also need electricity to run the filters, the UV filter, and we also need electricity to run the pump that pumps the grey water out of the final tank in that system. So it is, it is, a, it is an ongoing, it is an initial cost of construction, if you could call it infrastructure, and it's an ongoing cost. Now, people in town don't need to worry about any of that stuff because it's all supplied. Now, we have additional things that have nothing to do with money being expended. It's to do with what one does to keep a portion of one's community safe. For example, um, we clear the roadside drains. The drain outside our place is nearly as deep as I am tall, and it needs strimming up the sides, which is quite hard work for someone my size, and spraying along the bottom, because otherwise debris catches on the growth when we have a storm like we did at the end of November, when I was out there at 5.30 in the morning clearing the culvert so that our water wouldn't back up and because it was, the drain was totally full to the top and water wouldn't back up and flood the neighbour behind us, upstream from us, which would have happened if I hadn't unlocked the culvert. So we do some things that people in town would blanch at the thought of, I'm sure. The increase in rates for the properties like ours, ours is just a bit over an acre, I think is unfair, both in the light of what I have just outlined and also from the thought that has been voiced by people, but I can't vouch for how accurate this is because I quite frankly haven't looked into it, but are we being penalised to compensate for a lowering of rates for commercial interests? That is one thing I would really like an answer to. But apart from that, uh, I have nothing to say apart from the fact that I find this proposal manifestly unfair and that it creates an equality that I don't like. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, may I just ask Christina, ask Christina, do you currently get um, any charge for wastewater or is your property because you're not connected to... There is, there is no wastewater. No, no. So, and you're not being charged for that at present? 
I can't tell you that. Yeah. No. Yeah. And 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 I, and I suspect you're not. Although there are some slight mm. variations in terms of some of the semi-rural properties. Um, but certainly, if you're currently not being charged for wastewater, you would not be um, being charged under the proposed changes either. So just I to would, provide. I would suggest that possibly, if that charge is not on our rate statement, that that reduction of rate that that entails is possibly less than both the infrastructure of putting in the processing plant and running it and repairing things like the electric motor that runs the pumps in that sewage treatment plant was replaced after 15 years of going every day and every night and it cost $890 including the fee of the person who put it in. So I don't think those two things equate at all. I, I suspect they don't no. correlate. No. Do we have any other questions from councillors? Councillor Bogue. Thank you. Um, Christine, thank you. I noticed in your um, submission form response that there were some of the things that were suggested that you disagreed with. And one of them was you don't agree with the proposed removal... Oh, sorry. Um with the in proposed inclusion of a remission of refuse collection and curbside recycling targeted rates. And I just wondered what your thoughts were about no, that. No, I, I think that I, I did that one online and I went back and tried to change that when I realised what I had done and it wouldn't let me change it. I thought I had changed it and it wasn't until after I had filed it okay. that I realised that it still stood in its original form. And the other two that you disagreed with? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So that's possibly something that needs looking at mm -hmm. on that online form. Thank you for that. We'll definitely make a note of it and mm. get that looked into. Okay. If there's no further questions, thank you very much for your time today, thank Christina. You. And next we have Joy Rycroft. Hi Joy, welcome. Morena, can you hear me properly? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mayor Wise, councillors and ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joy Rycroft and I live with my husband on two hectares in Priority Road. We've lived there for 25 years. Um, I'm particularly concerned at the proposal to change the rating differential of other rural properties to residential other as are many others I have spoken to in the Priority Road area. One of the stated objectives of the proposed changes is making sure that similar properties pay similar rates. And I'd like to um, discuss with this with you, um, and this is the main gist really of my submission. Dictionaries define similar as having characteristics in common, strictly comparable, and looking or almost or being almost but not exactly the same. I believe there are inconsistencies in your proposal. Properties which are currently rated as other rural are almost without exception lifestyle blocks or small farms, which are in many ways very dissimilar to residential properties. Many of us in semi-rural rural, rural priority and other lifestyle areas use only a fraction of our properties, of our land, for residential purposes. And although most of our blocks are not commercial, we engage in many of the same practices as rural ratepayers, such as grazing, fencing, applying fertiliser, tree planting, pest and weed control, mitigating fire risk, which is a huge issue at the moment. Here's one of my poor neighbours mowing a massive paddock. Um, and 
also caring for our waterways. Stormwater flows through our properties. This picture on the right here is, is after the water had calmed down after the big event at the end of last year. At this time of the year, the stream bed is completely empty. Um, some of those lumps you can see there are actually huge pieces of tar seal and piles of metal off our road, which we have had to clean up. Without our input, much of the land around where we live would revert to possum and rabbit infested gorse and blackberry. With broken fire blackened fences, a situation our own two hectares was in when we purchased it 25 years ago. We live in a rural environment which is not similar to other residential environments. We live on a narrow winding road with a speed limit of 100 kilometres an hour without footpaths or lighting, and we have a rural delivery address. Our properties will have no change in services under this proposal. The other way in which we are definitely not similar to other residential properties is the provision of our own services. This is our own septic tank being pumped out last week. Um, when we discovered that we actually had to, um, re a plumber had to come in and rebuild quite a lot of it at some significant expense. We haven't got the bill yet, I hate to think how much it will be. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned that this proposal that uh, we're looking at seems to indicate a distinct lack of understanding around what living on a lifestyle block actually means, and several people have covered this and that we have a point of difference. Although we do not ta pay for targeted rates such as water or sewage, we can pay considerably more to provide our own septic systems and water supplies, um, <clears throat> which include capital expenditure and the ongoing costs, which Chris Christina has talked about previously. Uh, pressure tanks, piping, valves. We have two power meters down at our pump house, which is at the bottom of the hill there. Uh, we have to pump all our water up from there, by the way. One of which is solely for the power supply, that's the power meter. Mm -hmm. Our power, power, Pumping our water up to our house accounts for approximately one third of our power bill, so that's around $100 a month. We are responsible for power poles on all of our properties. Two of ours had rotted out and were completely unsafe, so last year we had to replace them or, or, or go underground. We decided to go underground and it cost us over $10,000 to get that power line in. <clears throat> Our inter internet uh, in the area is totally inadequate and there are no plans for fast broadband to be rolled out in the near future. We have always had a substandard landline service. One resident told me a few days ago that he was quoted $42,000 to connect to the exchange five years ago. Many of us in the priority community feel that our differential should stay the same or at the most have a slight increase um, as it is inequitable and unfair to change to 100% and classify us as residential, particularly given a lack of services. Um, I also, I hope you'll let me show you this, but I see an inconsistency in your argument that we should be rated as residential and the way you have decided who will be charged the new targeted rate for stormwater. The statement of proposal says this rate will apply to all properties within the recognised urban limit and that rural properties will not be charged this rate. We had a letter to say we would not be charged this rate, and right, rightfully so. We cannot be categorised as rural in one breath and residential in the next. The general rate pays for services in town that are for the common good. It is stated in the website's FAQs that semi-rural properties have access all the, to all the same services, uh, which we, we don't um, balk at paying for. This is given for the reason for including both types of prop these types of properties in the same residential differential and increase our rates by 35%. But this seems inconsistent when rural ratepayers also use their services and their rates will increase by 18%. And finally, I'd like to say that um, there's a bigger issue here. Under the Local Government um, Act, you, the council is required to look at the impact on the well-being of the community that these changes may make. And I feel strongly that the diversity of our community as a whole and the identity of semi-rural priority and other lifestyle areas is threatened by an overall inappropriate merger with residential properties beginning with this uh, proposed rate 
change. This will impact greatly on the sense of well-being and belonging of residents. Many of us already feel marginalised after the council's parkland subdivision, Urutu, was renamed Puraiti without any consultation process. We are no longer able to access statistics about our own community as now we are lumped in with parklands. So um, my suggestion is why not have a separate rating differential for lifestyle blocks, just as in Hastings District Council. This may help solve what appears to be a quandary on the part of the NCC in deciding where we actually fit. Without the benefit of services the targeted rates cover, we are obviously outside the recognised urban limit. This limit needs to be clearly defined, and I believe that although you say the district plan under which we are classified as rural residential has no bearing on the rating system, surely the two should be congruous. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Do we have any questions of Joy? <coughs> Councillor Brown. Thank you, Joy. I really liked your first slide and it got me thinking. The one around um, similar properties pay similar rates. As I'm interested, if we added the word value in there, does that change it for you? So if we had similar value properties pay similar rates? Um, you're talking about land value? That's, um, I think there's anomalies there as well, which I'm not, I don't have the figures in front of me. Um, so I would not, at the moment, be able to say without looking at those, but there are definitely anomalies that people have picked up with, with land value and, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Deputy Mayor Brosnan. Oh, sorry, Joy, we've got another question oh. here from... <laughs> Joy, you touched on it um, nearing the end of your submission and I, I think um, everyone would agree they're, they're dissimilar um, residential properties to um, lifestyle properties. But I'm just interested in your view on whether they are dissimilar in terms of their access to those council services that we're talking about increasing the differential on. So the, the likes of the, the cemeteries, the public toilets, parks and reserves. Do you see they have a dissimilar use of those council services? I think there is a dissimilar use, but that's, I don't think anybody is arguing that we need not contribute to those. But a lot of people have said tongue in cheek that they have no time to use them because they're so busy <laughs> engaging all these rural activities uh, with these activities. So I would say that we probably use them less, yes, but we're not, um, nobody, none of us have actually said that we wish to not contribute towards those because we love our city. You know, we love the um, the facilities that we have. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joy. Mm. And next, I would invite Warwick Marshall. Welcome, Warwick. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Councillors. Um, <coughs> this is not my first uh, meeting in front of um, uh, this council. I have been to other council meetings, so there's only a couple of familiar faces. Greg, Keith. <coughs> <laughs> I, my name is Warwick Marshall. I'm a resident of the Esker Valley, have been for the last coming up 70 years. Um, I'm a registered surveyor, have been for the last coming up 48 years. So some of the issues that you guys are facing, I'm quite familiar with. <coughs> um, <coughs> rates. My understanding of a rate in this instance is a charge made for a commodity or a service levied on a property by a local authority. Generally, those services are for the core functions of that local authority, and they are usually roading, water, waste and sewage disposal, and stormwater disposal. Public buildings, parks and reserves may also be included. Then there is the general rate for which the benefits for property such as ours is unclear. You, you refer to services. My question is, what services? When I arrived in the Esk Valley just on 70 years ago, we were on a main road all the way out from town. 
Apart from it now being a state highway, nothing has changed. There was no reticulated water supply. We had to provide and have had, had to maintain our own. Nothing has changed. There was no reticulated sewerage or waste disposal system. We had to provide and we've had to maintain our own. Nothing has changed. Originally, there were just three properties that extended up the Hill Road, now the city boundary. With the assistance of the then catchment board, the three property owners combined to improve the stormwater disposal and minimise the effects of the flooding by creating what was to become a private drain for the benefit of those properties. Despite my many approaches to the council expressing the concerns of the development on the nearby hill, which has been referred to in the previous speaker as now Esk Hills, um, and just as an aside, um, I got the original consent for that development. What is now Esk Hills originally had 26 sites upon it. The reason being they had to accommodate their own stormwater disposal so that there was little, if any, effect on those properties down below, both in Esk Valley and into Bayview. Subsequent development, as I think the previous speaker said, there's I think 53 sites up there, um, plus all the other stuff further around down um, Kamada Heights area. <coughs> um, Despite my many approaches, uh, <coughs> expressing my concern on the development of Esk Hills, Esk Hills um, those concerns were generally ignored. That development included council drains coming from that development, discharging onto land which eventually flowed into that private drain, which was not an approved stormwater outlet, which is required by your building code. I was also advised that with the then intended upgrade of Hill Road, some of those concerns would be addressed. That did not happen as it was considered not possible, a totally unacceptable excuse. My concerns resulted in a report presented to the council, author anonymous, advising that I lived on a property that flooded frequently. The author had seen it, that's what he reported. Wrong, absolutely wrong. Is this a way to treat a ratepayer? I note that this review is about making sure that similar properties pay similar rates. I think this has been referred to just recently here. No problem with that. I note that my rate category is to change from other rural to residential other. Can you please define other? What is other? Just because I live on my rural property and undertake a rural activity upon it, I've got five acres, acre around the house, four acres avocados, one of the original avocado growers. How does that make my residential property, uh, make, make my, my property residential? I have to live somewhere. The land is zoned main rural. There have always been rural activities on this land. Have you ever visited the area just to see what happens out there? In a recent phone call to this council regarding the state of the Eskdale Cemetery, which is within Napier City, I was told that that area was within Hastings District and I should contact them. We soon realised that they... We got it sorted out. Does my property look in any way similar to other residential properties? How is my property in any way similar to one in, for example, say West Shore or Mariba or Tamati or Bluff Hill? all of which are fully serviced residential properties. If my property is now to be considered residential, will you rezone that area accordingly so that the rate category reflects the land use or its potential? Will you provide the services that other residential properties enjoy? I doubt that very, very much. I respectfully ask that you reconsider your proposal to achieve what you have stated, namely making sure that residential, or making sure that similar properties pay similar rates rather than what many consider as a blanket rate irrespective of the services provided and or the land use. You also state that your proposal will ensure that the council's activities are funded to best reflect how the rates are used, that is the extent to which the service is funded through the general rate. There are few, if any, services in this rural locality that my property may benefit from, and it is unlikely to in the future. 
Thank you. Thank you, Warwick. Um, I note you commented that your property is five acres. Is it, yep. is it or is it slightly under five acres? Because five acres is the definition it that we're using. It was the last five acre subdivision done in the Hawke's Bay rural uh, in the Hawke's Bay County. Okay. Okay. And um, in terms of if there's any commercial activity undertaken on your property, then you're able, are you aware you're able to apply for a, a remission on that basis? Or, um, due to the size of the property, but there is commercial activity it, being undertaken? The commercial activity is lifestyle. Um, when we planted years ago, um, we've always grown things there, but then we you know, went into a permanent crop. It's, it keeps me busy. Like some years, um, you'll get a crop. Other years, like one year, we picked about 20 tonne. That following year, I picked 200 grams. That yeah. was my crop for the year. Um, it's hardly commercial. Mm. It's a lifestyle. Okay, thank you. But I enjoy it. It's frustrating, <laughs> challenging. I can imagine. Are there any further questions from councillors? Madam Mayor, just to follow up on your question, just to clarify, uh, was it acres or hectares you were referring to? It was a five-acre. It was a five-acre lot. Definitely it's now acre. two some two point oh four hectares or something. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Warren. Thank you. Uh, and next we have Robert Best. Welcome, Robert. Good morning everybody, um, to the councillors. Thank you for allowing me to present my objection to the rates proposal in person. Personally, I did not like the written form that Napier City Council submitted to ratepayers to fill out. I felt it did not cover all the issues. Our personal situation with this proposal, oh sorry, we are down in only Hunger Road in Bayview. Our personal situation with this proposal is a major increase in rates that our property will incur without any increase in services from Napier City Council. Our increase will be $30 a week. We are rural and cost in Napier City Council very little in the services we receive, which is basically a road. We pay for rubbish, recycling and water. We have no footpaths, street lights, sewerage, etc, etc. We accept that we have to pay for our share of the amenities that Napier City Council provide the city, i.e. libraries and pools. At the public meetings last year, ratepayers were told that the council does not want any more money from rates, but wants the financial burden changed so it was fair to all. We were told that Bayview and some other suburbs residents pay a lower percentage than other residents in Napier and this was not fair. We were told that commercial ratepayers pay a bigger percentage than comparable properties in other cities and this was not fair. So the answer in Napier City Council have come up with that Bayview rates and other areas will go up by 24% and commercial rates will decrease by 18%. I have seen comments that Napier City Council staff and councillors deny that this is subsidising and I suggest that they look up the dictionary as to what subsidisation means. So Bayview residents will be subsidising commercial ratepayers. Is this fair? Let's look at what rate Bayview ratepayers get as opposed to other ratepayers in Napier. Most roads have no footpaths. A lot of properties have septic tanks. They have water meters. Rural properties will be classed as residential and pay r residential rates, but will not be allowed to do what other residential ratepayers can do, like subsidise, like sub subdivide. Is this fair? Mr Harris Dinksy at the meeting I attended stated that Napier City Council did not like land banking of sections in the Bayview area and that empty sections will be charged for water and sewerage if they are within 100 metres of the facilities. Since when is the council staff members business on what landowners do with their property? So basically rate, Bayview ratepayers will have to pay more rates and receive nothing. The fixed costs of owning property are rising every year and a lot of people are living on fixed incomes or diminishing incomes. This is not a good time to put rates up by 
It is always easier to pick on small suburbs and rural areas as the voting population is less. I have heard the comment that the Bayview discounted rates are historical and this must end. The question is, are Bayview ratepayers going to receive more for the money? The answer is no. Is this fair? Let's look at commercial ratepayers. Their rates are tax deductible and so not, uh, are not a huge net cost to their business. Their rates are a known cost of doing business, so businesses can factor in this cost when pricing their goods and services. The article in the Hawke's Bay today, late last year, when Napier City Council staff accepted they can do nothing to stop pollution into Napier's waterways, especially in the Onikawa area. The pollution has caused Pandora Pond to become a cesspool. My granddaughter cut her legs three years ago swimming in Pandora Pond and it is still not healed properly. And this is when the pond was classed as OK for swimming. One only has to look at the Tannery Stream in Onikawa, probably the most polluted waterway I've ever seen and not a dairy farm in sight. This stream ends up in Pandora Pond. This pollution is coming from rate commercial ratepayers and the cost of monitoring and cleanup should be borne by commercial ratepayers. Take last Friday, there was a spill of 1,000 litres of hydrochloric acid into the waterway. Today's Herald reports that 40,000 litres had to be pumped out. Who pays for the associated costs from the spillage of such a dangerous product? Answer, all Napier ratepayers. And why should residential ratepayers subsidise the polluters again? Is this fair? It was reported today that Napier City Council are not sure whether the polluter responsible will be charged. Unbelievable. If the polluter is charged, what will they be, will they be fined the actual cost? Most companies have public liability insurance which will cover any fine, so they don't really care. The pollution in this area of water will see more triathlon events being moved from Napier. The cost of providing water and sewage to the accommodation sector, where I assume they are not metered, now that the sector is becoming government beneficiaries, why should these ratepayers be subsidised? I am probably the only scratching the surface of why commercial ratepayers should not be subsidised by Bayview ratepayers. At the consultation meetings, we were asked for ideas to save the Napier City Council money. I have little knowledge of the workings and the history of the city as I've only been a resident for four years. But I will say, aside, that um, you're a hell of a lot better than Wellington City Council. But one thing I can see would be fair and save a city a lot of money is the use of water. The water Napier City Council delivers to each household is putrid, both in taste and now in colour. I stand corrected, but every person that stood for council in 2019 was going to sort the water out. Not one said how and by when. We are nearing the halfway mark of this term, and I stand corrected again that there has been no major announcement how we're going to get first world water. I have no knowledge of Napier City's water supply, but I cannot understand why every property in the city is not metered. Each summer there are restrictions on water use, and still Napier City Council allows houses and retirement homes to be built, when clearly there is a water shortage. Water and the lack of it will stop growth. Councillors will cry that it will be political suicide to introduce metres, but sometimes the hard decisions have to be made. If every property in Napier was metered, then the wastage through leaky pipes and general wastage would be disappear overnight and major savings would be made. The people who fill, fill pools two or three times a year would cease. Unnecessary lawns would go brown, and some of the parks that are watered, which no one uses, like Patani Demand, could stop. Any money that is raised by water charges could be used to exploit new water supplies. Once again, thanks for hearing me, and I repeat, this proposed rates increase is unfair and needs to be reassessed. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Robert. And uh, certainly we do have some challenges ahead of us in terms of water infrastructure and provision of water to our communities. So uh, apologies if you don't feel that you're getting regular updates on what projects are underway, but we'll um, ensure that that information is going out on a regular basis. Cause I'm there not, no, more, I don't get yeah. read the paper much, so yeah. um, it's probably where, where I'm coming from, not from you. <laughs> uh, I'll just um, open up for questions. Councillor Bogue. Um, yes, well, thank you for that. Um, as a result of the submissions that we received, the recommend, one of the recommendations that the officers put in front of us that you're probably not familiar with was that um, the rating categories are increased to, a uh, fourth one is added, and that is semi-rural, which I think would cover um, your situation. Um, so there has that been that distinction made. And if you have a look on the agenda, um, you'll see what that actually means but it's based on the target of services provided to Greater Napier 
It's recommended that this differential be classified as any property that's not defined as commercial and resident, industrial or rural and would not otherwise be defined as residential or other but is not connected and cannot reasonably be connected to city water and sewerage system as defined as semi-rural. So we have taken into consideration many of the recommendations that were made and what we will be discussing after the at the end of the hearing is whether we think that would actually cover the concerns that people like yourselves have put in front of us. But it doesn't stop my rates going up by $30 a week, does it? <laughs> Might not be quite so much. A lower differential. But they'll still go up and we'll still get no more services. That's right. Yep, thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, Robert, and thank you for your feedback on the form as well. Um, obviously, we're always striving to improve the way that we engage with community members, so we'll take that on board. Thank you. Thank you. And our last um, submission prior to the lunch break is Paul Harris. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome to both of you. <laughs> Another crystal. Yeah. Right. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to submit this morning, the, the last submitter. I think our submission is going to be simple, and I'm Paul Harris, and this is Farrell with me today. He's riding shotgun for me, keeping me in line. So, uh, Your wingman. Welcome that. <laughs> I pay rates in Tiawa, he pays rates in Bayview. So, obviously, both of us affected me slightly more than him. I think I just slightly, and I don't think that was quite as equitable as it should be either, but um, unfortunately, it's the way the cookie crumbles. If I look back and look at history around rates, and I've got quite a exposure to them, I look at the Rating Powers Act. Look, rates are a taxation. So at the end of the day, that's the fundamental principle of it, whether we like it or not. We all like to see equity within a taxation. And I think we've heard a lot of arguments when I've just sat here for those four submitters this morning around equity and, and uh, perceived equity within taxation. If you're going to have perceived equity within taxation, you're going to have um, take rate payers that are relatively satisfied with what's being delivered and with what's being charged. And we've certainly seen this morning any adjustment, it can be quite difficult. I think from my point of view, I get a $1,400 increase a year. Well, it's similar to the, to the $30 a week of, of other ratepayers. Where does that sit? I think history's shown that, it's, it, that obviously it's a big increase. Um, is that fair or isn't it fair? And Farrell would be in the same boat. Of course, when I see a lot of residential properties going down by a small amount, it sounds politically tenable because there's a lot more going down than there is going up, so it's easy. And if you look at the adjustments I made in Tararua around the rates, um, <laughs> It, was, it, was, it can be very hard within a community, but the perceived equity is really important. Where does equity fall? We draw no services, as has been proven today, okay? very limited services. And when we draw those services, I was really worried about that target rate, because I said to friends in Auckland about two, two and a half years ago, you know, maybe you want to consider your own uh, rooftop water collection, and there's a lot of good tanks today and a lot of things available. It solves the water issues and it makes it relatively easy. They laughed at me at the time. It was fascinating to watch them at Christmas giving me a real grilling around how they would do it and what would happen <laughs> when they came down and spent Christmas with me. So a different perception. We talk about putting targeted rates up to, you know, to the 70% mark of, of the actual cost at the gate if they're not drawing the service. Maybe we should be encouraging some of those people not to draw the service. You know, some of my properties got flooded recently. They got flooded not because of what came out of the sky. They got flooded because of what came back up through the stormwater system. The flood didn't come out of the sky. It came out of a poorly maintained stormwater system where the key stakeholders in the, in, that should be involved in that stormwater system feel relatively alienated so they wouldn't answer the phone at the time. Now, at the end of the day, we have to deliver to this community. We've got an adjustment in the charges and we expect more to be delivered to a higher standard to meet those charges. That's called equity in a rating system. The changes, fair, not fair, um, I don't think anyone would perceive them as fair. I don't think $30 increase a week could be considered as fair when I compare a neighbour who, whose developers who get no increase and a slight decrease. Of course there's no fairness there. But there is adjustment and we will have to accept the rates are a taxation under the rating powers act. Thank you for the opportunity today and we'd more, both of us would more than welcome questions, Farrell particularly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Paul. Do we have any, Councillor Brown? 
Um, thank you for your submission. Um, I'm just interested, uh, so which um, differential are you under at the moment? Uh, we're just on the, under the five hectares, so of course we'll get the... Um, on the the rural? Uh, yeah. yeah. So the, the additional differentials, I, I meant to comment on that actually, that the addition of different differentials will help. Differentials are always tricky when you look at the Rating Powers Act because you've got to, to some way justify the differential and there's always going to be boundaries on that differential no matter what we do, but certainly if it can bring that $1,400 increase back to a reasonable level, for particularly a lot of people in Bayview and myself and the, and the further lands out there and my neighbours in Tiawa, wouldn't mm. that be great? Yeah. So my question, so you're on, I think it's about 63% that you're paying compared to 100% based off land yep. value with, yep. in town. And I was just wondering, how would you justify that, so 63, quick math, 27, 37%, 37% discount, how would you justify that on your property compared to someone in town? Yeah, I think we talked about drawing services when I hooked a lot of, uh, before, and I look at it, you know, I have properties in Tutera, I have properties in Upper Hutt that are on 40% differentials. Okay, and if I look at those properties, we can't we can't access a library, we can't access central services, we have no access to, that's the way the overhead's split often, is the way that determines what our charging comes back to in that differential, but at the end of the day, that differential reflects the fact that our land is a lot more intense. If I look at England as a good example, perhaps to answer your question more directly, in England on farmland, I only pay on the value of the farmhouse, because the farmhouse draws the services, farmland is not rated. Okay. So, and that's in Europe too, so that's, that's across the... And that was only a change, probably. It was a wee while ago now, it was the, the late 90s. Yeah. I don't think that that's an option for no, us by legal law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. It's, it's quite a good option, I think, in some ways. That reflects that differential you're talking about, because, of course, with big areas of land, you get big valuations that don't draw the services. Our houses draw the services. Mm. And although that's um, not in the current proposal, that doesn't mean it's not an option that we can consider. Okay. Just to provide that clarity. Is it, would the only way we could do that, just to tease that out, is if we went to capital, though? Is that because we can't no, just do No, you would do it based on the land area that would be defined as the dwelling land area as opposed to the total land area of the rural property. Oh, okay. Just to oh. throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Crystal. Um, hi, Paul. And <laughs> um, how big's your property? Uh, four point something hectares, obviously. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And is it used as a farming? Yeah, yeah. No, it fits in for finishing stock for uh, for our other agricultural, bigger agricultural properties. It's great because it con con takes a cold climate and turns it into a warm climate, so yeah. it's utilisable. It's probably the, the writing's on the wall for it, which is sad in a way, but it's reality. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we've got Somerset straight opposite, so of course the writing. Even the truck driver said it the other day when he picked up some stock. He wondered how long. I've got a farm in Wellington that has 50,000 people a year on it. That says a lot. At the moment, I only have 30 going past on the new cycleway and probably six old residents look out the window at me every morning keep my eye on me. You know, they're welcome. They're more than welcome. Beryl hasn't had a question. I'm quite disappointed. <laughs> just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Price. <laughs> Farrell, just give us a rundown of your circumstances of what size block you've got in, please. So I live up Kaimata Road, um, got a couple of acres up there, and I have a few properties in town also, and a little block up two terra. So, yeah, rates are uh, an ongoing cost. So it was, I said to Paul, I'd love to just come in here and just to see what, as a council, what we're going to do moving forward and how we can help the district. Do you, uh, your property on Kaimata Heights, do you do anything, is it just residential or is it, or do you do something on it? Oh, I've got a couple of sheep on there and, you know, um, like I say, I've, I bought that for a lifestyle just so my kids can feel a bit of the rural out outlook of life. Always lived in a rural community, so it's, it's uh, something I'm passionate about, but obviously it's, uh, it's, close to, it's good to be close to town. Um, like everyone listening to all the submissions today, yeah, we haven't got a lot of services uh, from the council because we're all rural people with you know, uh, people of the land. So like you say, I've got my own bore up there. Um, yeah, we've, we've just got a, a road frontage and that's it. But other than that, we've got our own septic tank. So we've, you know, keep our own maintenance up. Thank you. 
Um, Paul, um, I was interested in your comment about how we should be encouraging people not to draw on services, and I guess that sort of links back to the proposal where we're saying that um, the sewerage rate will increase from 50 to 70% for rating units that are not connected but within 30 metres of the system. So I guess just wanting to tease out a little bit more your, sort of your thoughts. No, it's, it's a great comment. I think it's one of the ones I've got at the time. So one is people are, not, people are able to maintain their own systems that they've done in the past. I wouldn't say around sewerage. I think that's a responsible block, but I'd certainly say around water. have a huge capability city and there are some great products today that produce safe water for those households and they're a lot cheaper value and I think we should be encouraging that not discouraging that mm. and it's a bit like solar in some ways the options are getting better and they're getting better value as we go forward and uh, you know I look at a couple of our properties they're solar only these days and boy that saved a big servicing cost and it's amazing even my daughter can come home turn all the lights on turn everything charge your device and I'll duck off to Ocean Spa for a swim and when I come back, it's still running good as gold, and we've, you know we've got a plenty left on the on the uh, on the on the battery bank. And and I look at that, and I go, what an option for the future. And and the guys that work for me are quite shocked by that because it didn't cost us a fortune. Mm. And I think the total cost of that system was about fifteen hundred dollars, a okay. little less. So and and it's really robust and it's really reliable. So I think water's in a similar boat. And I, and I think particularly you know as we did with the friends in Auckland, I think you can get some great tanks that you don't even notice alongside the house now that just tuck nicely in there. And if we could even take that back to 10%, that's why I think we've got to encourage it, not discourage it with a targeted rate. Mm. I think if we could even take that back to 10%, it also starts to bring in some personal accountability people for people. I can deliver what I need in life. People have forgotten of delivering some. I answer my mum's phone, who was the deputy mayor of Upper Heart, and I answer her phone. I'm shocked by it. I know that all you get the same calls. You know, I'm shocked sometimes by the lack of personal responsibility and accountability. You know, I look at the stormwater and things. I used to hop on the school bus. The road used to be flooded. We used to hop out of the school bus and clear the stones, clear the locks and go to school. You know, today, her phone rings red hot of when they're going to clear the road. <laughs> Into tear our road can last a week. There's always someone comes along with a chainsaw. We don't ring the council. Okay, so it's a different mentality, and we're trying to bring that out with the water. I love your comment about the water, because I think, I think it's, a, it's a road for the future, and it makes people start to understand water as we move towards three waters. And I'm not particularly welcoming what the government's talking about at the moment around that, mm. but I think as we move towards three waters, I think that water one's an easy one to pick up and run with. And it was fascinating to watch the culture shift in Auckland from two years ago with my friends, really. Mm. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have any further questions? No. Thank you, Paul and Farrell. We appreciate Thank your time. You. Thank you for the option. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Right, so we have um, finished a little bit earlier than on our agenda. So a little uh, bit of extra time through our lunch break. What time will we be? We will be reconvening at one o'clock. <laughs>